Three weeks ago today, I was thrust into the middle of a situation in Fort Worth that was not of my doing. It was the doing of the superintendent who took away local control from the parents on his transgender policy, which we believe was enacted illegally and in violation of the law, the Education Code 26.008. So today I'm sending a request for a legal opinion from Attorney General Ken Paxton. You will all get a copy of this request that will specifically point out, does Superintendent Scribner's policy violate Chapter 26 of the Texas Education Code or any other law in its effort to keep student information from parents? Here we have a school superintendent whose policy says we can keep this secret from their parents. We don't have to tell mom and dad. It's against the law. At least I believe that, and we're asking for a legal opinion on that. Secondly, did the superintendent have the authority to unilaterally adopt this policy without adoption by the school board vote and without public comment? They had a broad-based policy back in 2011 dealing with, with any type of discrimination against anyone. But this policy by the superintendent singles out just transgender students. It may be a very minute number. In fact, we don't even know the number in the school system. In fact, you have to ask the question, why did this policy come out of nowhere when there seemed to be nothing to create it? I said at the time, because it was directly linked to the Obama policies in Washington. Some in the media scoffed. 36 hours later, I was proven right. This superintendent, again, I call for his resignation if he will not pull down this policy. If he doesn't pull down the policy, then the school board should fire him. And if the school board doesn't fire him, then the people of the Fort Worth Independent School District will have to hold the school board accountable. I want local control. It is this superintendent and this school board that's prohibiting local control. We don't want to get involved in policies that are approved by the board and supported by the people and implemented by the superintendent the way it should work. But when we have a rogue runaway superintendent and a rogue runaway school board, then the legislature this coming up session is going to have to look at this issue. Also today, um, I'm announcing that I will be sending a letter to every superintendent in the state of Texas, letting them know that they should not move forward on the president's guidelines. Now, that's a violation of local control. See, we will not be blackmailed by 30 pieces of silver from the president of the United States. We receive about $10 billion in funding over two years in our two-year budget, about 40 to 45 percent or so, rounding numbers there, go to free and reduced lunch, so that means the president would be taking food off the table, the poorest of the poor, if he wants to punish schools. That's why I call it blackmail, trying to get someone to do something that they don't want to do or you'll punish them. So this fight is just beginning. Eleven states have now, I believe ten states joined Texas last week in our lawsuit against the federal government, and we are pursuing this here with the Fort Worth Independent School District. Once again, the superintendent can pull this down and say, I made a mistake. I've only been here six months. I don't understand Texas. You know, I didn't understand we actually have a law to follow. I didn't know there was an education code. I wasn't clear thinking. I didn't even write a sensible policy. And I'm going to pull it down, and I'm going to go through the proper process that the law says, and that is to take it to the school board, to let people speak, let the school board vote. The superintendent does not have the right to adopt policy. That's up to the school board. It's his job to implement it. 